So here's what takes place. The SA node, remember the SA node does not have a resting or a stable resting membrane potential, okay? But those actual cardiac cells do, and this is everything we just talked about. Can you now understand that graph? Good deal, good deal. So that leads us to this. Now I'm so old, this was called the EKG. It's now the ECG, the electrocardiogram. Ever had one done? It's kind of cool. You know, they put all the leads on you, turn it on, and then turn it off as quick as they turn it on. I'm like, do what? Because they're only looking for one cycle. That's it. They're not looking for any more than that. But oh boy, don't leave me in the room with the machine. Okay? But hey, inquiry minds want to know, right? Okay? Because being the age I am, yes, okay, I've had that event where I thought I was dying. Okay? Ends up just being dead. But hey, it happens, right? So, you know, I end up going to the hospital, you know, getting carted in, getting hooked up, and all these tests run. And they come in and they're like, I want to hear, we just need you to drink this stuff right here. It's just good. Well, goody, goody, goody. But it was fun. Okay? And I got to have this done. They left me in the room with the machine and all that sort of stuff, so I had more fun. And this ECG, and I'm sorry, you guys, I'm going to call it the EKG, okay, because that's what I'm used to. A composite of all action potentials of the nodes, meaning the SA node, AB node, AV bundle, all right, as well as the actual cardiac cell, okay, it gets amplified and recorded by the placement of those electrodes. Now, here's what is recorded, okay? Now, remember, we're talking about all of the events of that SA node, AV node, to the AV bundle, we're looking at contraction, relaxation of the atria, contraction, relaxation of the ventricles. Something in the peaks and the valleys represents some function of that cycle. We have usually what's referred to PQRST. They're, they have their little terms that they're going to use, like the doctors who really know how to read these and that sort of thing. They'll be, oh, well, you know, they could look at it and they could see something and they could go, I mean, they're sitting there, you know, watching it on the screen as it goes by and be like, wow, this person is in complete heart block. All right, well, I'm glad he learned how to read that. Okay, or they're in atrial fibrillation or ventricular fibrillation. They can look at these peaks and valleys and know that. As you get into your programs and you get out there, and if you're like in emergency room situations or whatever the case might be, you'll probably learn how to look at that also. But to give you an idea of what they're looking at, they're looking at 
all of these functions together. So they'll have what's going to be the P wave. There's an interval between P, Q, well, P and R, the R peak. Q is a peak. S is a peak. T is a wave. Everything having intervals. What do you think those intervals correlate to? Think about how we just talked about 50 milliseconds. The time frame between the actions that are occurring. Does that make sense? Okay, because we had a time frame from SA to AV, AV to bundle, and then up for Kenji's. Okay, then we had a time frame, atria filling, atri uh, ventricle filling. Do you see what I'm go where I'm going with this? Okay, so it's going to be correlating to these events that are taking place in that one cycle. So the P wave, the P wave is representing that SA node firing. When that SA node fires, the atria are going to begin to depolarize because it sends that signal over to the atria and then to that AV node. Got a time frame. The QRS complex. This is letting them know ventricular depolarization. The S to T segment, ventricular systole. The T wave, repolarization of the ventricles. So each one of those pieces of that EKG are letting the doctors know something. So they would know, for example, as they are looking at that EKG, as it's being read across the screen or a piece of paper or whatever the case might be, all right, they would take each single peak and valley apart. Because the P wave tells them something. As we move from P into the QR, as we move into the QRS, as we move into the T, they would be able to look at that and say, something about that's not normal. Maybe there's no P wave. Maybe there's no R peak. Maybe the T wave is missing. And they would look at it and they would say, that person is in something. So they would know how to read a normal EKG. Normal, 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 plateau, Normal, 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 plateau. Now compare that to this. Now, that right there, pretty easy, right? Telling you that, well, I don't see dots. Is anything right on that one? No. Okay. But, the doctor would know exactly what that meant. All right? He would look at that and he would go, wow, this person's having a heart attack. So when we begin to deviate anything from the norm, we could have the person be in a heart attack. It could let the doctors know something about the conduction pathways. What do I mean by conduction pathways? 
And if we're looking at that, what part of this event that's taking place goes wrong? Our action potentials. There could be something wrong in the SA node, AV node, bundle hiss. What about heart enlargement? Ever heard of somebody having that? Okay, that's not good. Why would an enlarged heart not be good? Hmm? We are affecting pressures. We are affecting the actual structure because the muscle cells have stretched out. And if the muscle cells stretch out too far, they can't contract properly, which means we don't get the blood flow to the tissues that we need. So it could let them know something like that. It could let them know to begin to look at maybe electrolytes. A hole in their heart is usually going to be heard. So when they go to do the listening with the stethoscope, there's usually where, when you like get into your clinicals and stuff, you'll be taught how to actually listen for those sounds, which is why it's a good idea when the person's like doing your blood pressure and stuff, don't talk to them, okay? You know, kind of be quiet. But they know what normal is, and therefore, if there's a sound in there that shouldn't be, they're going to they're gonna know to start looking at something. And that's usually how they discover it. They usually... It's a difference in the sound. The sound. And the sa but see, certain sounds are indicative of certain things. Okay, some of them could be for the vowels, for example. But they know something's wrong. And they have to begin to do, well, not have to, but they'll usually begin to do tests. And it'll get discovered. So we have quite a few different heart issues. When there's something wrong with the beating of the heart, we term it an arrhythmia. One type is ventricular fibrillation. This one, serious because it deals with the electrical signals. Basically, signals are just doing whatever they want to do. There is like no core, and they're just not in their cycle that they should be in. We don't get any blood pumping and we don't get any blood moving very much the hallmark of a heart attack. If we don't stop it real quick, it is going to kill the person. So what do we find now in a lot of places? I think it's out in the hall. The AEDs, okay, the defibrillators. Now, strong electrical shocks. The hope, depolarize that cardiac cell and reset it. Now, some people actually have issues where this is a problem, and every so often they have to go to the doctor and be purposely shocked to keep their heart in the correct rhythm. Have an aunt that has to do that. But, it, I mean, it works. We know there's no cure, as of right now, for any type of artery disease, something that is going to affect the flow, the, um, the pressures, everything within the heart. But if we can get the defibrillation done, the hope is that the blood flow can be restored, tests can be done, and we can determine what might be wrong and fix what might be wrong to the best of the abilities of the doctors. Other arrhythmias, heart block. 
failure of that electrical system to do the electricity. That's what that EKG right there looks like. What are we missing? We're missing QRS. Not T. T's out here. QRS. And that's how they can look at that EKG and go, wow, that person's in complete heart block. Did any of y'all watch um, the Discovery Life channel? The um, untold stories of the ER? Okay. You hear stuff like this a lot. It's actually a really good show to watch because it, it, you, you learn a lot. Hmm? It what? Oh, it's just untold stories oh. and it's anything. And when I say anything, I mean anything. Of the stories in the ER that come in. Some of them, you know, like the dude with the snap internal on his neck. Just say, okay? Um, but it is a good show. This one, premature ventricular contraction. Now, me looking at that, I would not know that right off the bat. Okay? Like I've said, people who do cardiology and neurology, my hat goes off to them. And they get whatever they, they earn, whatever they get. So when we begin to think about this electrical system, um, one of the things that we deal with, we're dealing with the flow of the blood and we're dealing with the pressure of the blood. Pressure causes the flow and resistance is going to oppose it. So what are these? What are we dealing with? Fluid wants to do what? Go from the area of high to low pressure. All right? That's what fluid wants to do. When it does that, that is termed a pressure gradient. Is everybody following me? goes from high to low. We measure it in millimeters of mercury, Hg. And we usually measure it with a manometer for what we term blood pressure. We are going to use a spigmo manometer. Say that ten times. Spigmo manometer. All right. It's pretty cool too. 